Brian and I were asked to submit an idea for this uh, TAD talk, um, we immediately thought about students. And that is one of the big things that keeps bringing us back here year after year, portfolio review after portfolio review, to speak in classes, to talk to the students, to do mock interviews, to critique portfolios. And so I immediately, as a copywriter, said, I know exactly what we can talk about, copywriting. Because everybody <laughs> loves copywriting. <laughs> However, not here, Jeff. <laughs> that was quickly rejected. So Brian came up with a better idea. And maybe, Brian, you can go into a little bit about uh, uh, what your suggestion was. Well, we um, have the, the, the privilege of, uh, like Randy said, we, we have uh, interns coming in all the time at Lime Valley Advertising, and it's, um, it's interesting to go through that interview process. Uh, we get a lot of uh, students coming in from different colleges. None of them, of course, as, as, uh, as talented as the, as the BSU grads. No one. But, um, no one. But we do, um, we started to uh, recognize a trend. And, and I know that we've talked a little bit about trends and anti-trends, <laughs> but we did recognize a trend. Yes. Uh, and, it, and it might be something that, um, uh, that can be really helpful uh, to students that are, that are in the audience today. And um, that is in that interviewing process and in the process of applying for a job and actually what takes place after that, uh, that application. Um, it's all a matter of exposure and revealing of yourself and what you are capable of doing. So when we're talking about exposure in an interview situation, um, what is it? Well, a lot of what we mean by exposure, and it sounds like it's going to get really interesting, um, and it might. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the 10 minutes isn't up yet. <laughs> keep it clean. Keep it clean. So we're going to try to keep it above board. But exposure is in many ways disclosure, and exposure happens uh, to students uh, during the process of exposing themselves to different things, and then exposing themselves to a prospective employer, which is the, the, the situation um, that we want to discuss here today. Very much like dating. Um, if, you know, obviously at one time or another, most of us have been on a date. Some of us have been on fewer dates than others, but, you know, we won't go into that. Um, but uh, have you ever been, and even if it's a, if it's a friendship, if, if it's a relationship, uh, that disclosure, sometimes it starts off real slow and you get done with that dinner date and you're like, I don't have any idea who that person is. Sometimes then, you get done. Yeah, the opposite. <laughs> the opposite would be, happens. Oh my gosh, you're five minutes into a date, and you know the person's life story, and not all of it is appealing, and <laughs> you know Ooh. hold some of that back, you know. And this is a little bit on the on the human relations uh, side. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about exposure. We're going to uh, tie it in a little bit closer to home. Uh, some of you may even practice this tomorrow. Yes, you might take something away with you that you can actually use right away tomorrow. For those of you presenting. For, for those of you that are presenting. Exposure in an interview situation occurs at several different levels. In, in, in terms of a design st uh, a student uh, or former graduate coming into a, a prospective employer, um, that's going to happen uh, in their, the subject matter that they've chosen to um, put into their portfolios. It's also going to happen uh, in the narrative that they develop to support that per portfolio. That's another form of uh, exposure. It happens in the resume and cover letter, if there is a resume and cover letter, but we'll get into that. Um, it also happens in the actions and follow-up that occur after uh, the interview has happened. So the, I guess the biggest thing that we see when students are coming in or graduates, recent graduates are coming in to apply for a job or students uh, coming in to apply for an internship is a case of underexposure. And another way of describing underexposure is simply short selling yourself. And this happens for a variety of reasons. Uh, in an interview situation, might become nervous, uh, uh, might uh, uh, resort to, to comfort Areas zones in, comfort. In, in terms of, uh, of the content of your portfolio. Um, but one thing that even if you're presenting um, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe next year or the year after. Hmm. We're going to talk about underexposure a little bit uh, in, in, in how it relates to the subjects that you actually portray in your portfolio. Yes, because that's a way that, uh, that students will sell themselves short by underexposing uh, themselves in their portfolio through the subject matter that they don't cover. And that's what we see uh, so often in, in interview situations is, is too much too close to home. 
uh, too, many, uh, too many pieces relating to the same subject because it's something that you like. Yep. Also happens in the, in the narrative that they use to describe their pieces in their portfolio. It's limited. It's to very top level. Um, resume and cover letter don't cover the essentials. Maybe there is no cover letter. We've seen that too. Right. And then uh, action. No follow-up, no thank you card, no inquiry after an interview. Now, that never becomes more apparent than in, in when our situation, maybe we have a hiring uh, a position that's available and we're bringing people into interview and we bring five in and one sends a thank you card back. Well, how, how does that person stand out? Well, how do they rate? Right. They're hired. They're hired. We're going to talk about our student here. This is Kate. This uh, is Kate. And apologies to any of the potential she's Kate's in for an interview today she's in for an interview and uh, she's interviewing with you Brian she's uh, uh, demonstrating her uh, uh, creative uh, abilities uh, she also uh, is using her portfolio to showcase one of her passions uh, which is snowboarding well, yeah, and uh, and so she's talking about snowboarding and she's actually designed a snowboard and then she's going on to talk a little bit more about her um, love, of uh, love of snowboarding, and she has designed a billboard uh, for snowboarding, and she's de designed a line of uh, uh, clothing for snowboarding, and pretty soon... Uh, what do you got? What's at, the picture? At, at the hey. end of the interview, this is what we have. She's into snowboarding. She's, and what do I remember at the end of the interview? Her design skills? Her, tech, her, 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 her grasp of technology, no, I remember. Oh, yeah, that's right, she's a snowboarder. She's a snowboarder. That's underexposure. Over selling yourself short. Selling yourself short. Overexposure is another situation. Doesn't happen quite as often, but it can. Overexposure in an interview situation, well, portfolio pieces be, uh, contain offensive or inappropriate subject matter. Do some research into the places that you're applying and the places that you're going to interview before uh, finalizing your portfolio. Your narrative becomes too personal or too focused on the subject matter. That means, you re you, let's say you did a piece on uh, uh, an animal rescue shelter, and all you talk about is how great the animal rescue shelter is, but you don't talk at all about the thought that went into designing the piece for the animal shelter. That's uh, overexposure. Resume and cover letter, too personal, or it gets off track, and of course, well, the action stalker, you wouldn't believe it, but... Yeah, it does, it, it happens, it happens. <laughs> and Brian, you've probably experienced uh, some of the, the issues with uh, offensive material and portfolio pieces? It is, some of it is just simply, uh, um, it's uh, indecent exposure. I mean, I've, I've seen nude self-portraits before there was even selfies. That's a selfie so. before a selfie was a selfie. <laughs> Now, that may be artistic, but it may not be the most appropriate It wasn't right piece. for our agency. Exactly. So what we have here is our... Maybe practice a little yes, uh, censorship. Yes, our, 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 our overexposed uh, person. That brings us to ideal exposure, and this is where we get the perfect picture. So we look at a portfolio, and we look at a presentation, and maybe there is a piece on snowboard. Yeah, maybe there is a snowboard. We're not saying don't, don't uh, look at pieces that are... Um, uh, um, Close, close to near your and dear to you. Yeah, yeah. by all means. Um, what about automobiles? My portfolio had automobiles in it because that was something that I was interested in and, and <laughs> still am. <laughs> Uh, uh, pets. pets. You know, uh, uh, again, these are ideas that some of these may be near and dear, but some of them, you might never had a dog in your life. You might not have, you know, maybe it's a, a, a food company for, for pets. Yeah. Try something different. Get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Retail products, another great way to... Retail, yeah, in this case, hair care products. Um, uh, anything like that, you know, things that are, again, comfort zone, but let's see something outside. How much more valuable would that be if you were in an interview situation and you talked about something that you knew quite well, yep. and then you brought in something and said, I knew nothing about this. I knew nothing. But, I but now I know, it. because I, I know how to research as a graphic designer, uh, as a communications professional. I know how to research, and I know how to uh, determine audience, and you go through that whole conversation. Maybe um, it's a chair. Chair. I don't know who'd have a chair in their portfolio. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Maybe it's a, a, a non-profit. We love to see uh, students that have done work for, for non-profits and maybe things that they don't, a cause that they don't know anything about, but they've learned about it. And certainly discussions about where you went 
uh, to school. You've, you've had such a, a unique opportunity, as we've heard from all the presenters today uh, and Randy, and, and believe me, it's just like coming home after, after 30 years. And, um, How long? <laughs> uh, certainly after, uh, if you're interviewing with somebody who you know, because you did your, your research, uh, had some ties to the university, uh, and um, a technology, art, and, and design, absolutely. Nobody uh, prepares their students better than Bemidji State University when it comes to that. So, uh, you know, great kudos to all the, the wonderful instructors here and the people that come back uh, and, and help out as well. So you've gone through that, and now that in that interview situation, you have that true picture of you. Yep. Ideal exposure. Thank you.